then I construct ZT2. And again, copy and paste, change this to a 2. And because I'm not very good at math, instead of squaring this in my head, I put 2 squared, which is going to be 4. 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. And again, 5 refers to the period of the lab, fifth period lab. That's it. simple regression and these are my gammas. These are the gammas we're going to use in what we'll see. Gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2. All significant. Um, we know that for a quadratic it's going to be uh, uh, x, the coefficient on x is positive, the coefficient on x squared is going to be <coughs> increasing and decreasing rate. Right? Just remember the kind of basic algebra or, or, or geometry of so we're already more confident in this because we've got better T's. The shape is coming out as we expected. Everything looks good. All right. So we just got, this goes back to the previous slide. We just got gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2. We're going to take those gammas. Remember, we constructed these beta zeros, which we used to get here. But now we need to reconstruct these beta zeros. So we need to pull gamma zero from our regression, gamma one from our regression, gamma two from our regression. We need to pull them again out, but multiply gamma one by two, gamma two by four, three, nine, and so on and so on and so on. So we're still using a lot of the same, the do file from this past uh, homework and these two files are going to be a lot of life. The process is going to be a lot of life in terms of pulling out um, those regression coefficients, those lag, lag regression coefficients. Whoops. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And I did it again. period lags, it's just going to be gamma zero, right? So I'm pulling out the coefficient of the constructed variable, z1. My beta one is going to be the coefficient of gamma one, I'm sorry, gamma one, gamma gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, and that's just gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two for the first period left, which is basically one squared, <coughs> one cube. And then here again, two period lag, so we're going to multiply that times two, <coughs> which is there. And then 4 is going to be 2 squared, which is 2 squared there. For the 3 period lag, it's going to be 3 and then 3 squared. So we'll and you can see that times 3 times 3 squared. So again, a lot of copying and pasting. It's not like you're writing every one of these lines of code from scratch. There's a ton of copying and pasting going on. Any questions? Is everyone following? Ish? Ish. 
4 again, we got 4, and then we're multiplying it times 4 squared. So you can really see the pattern. I tried to you know, stick with this, you know, the same pattern here we're seeing here. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, guess what the next one's going to be? 5 squared. What is 5? Five? 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, so we have an 8 period lag. We were literally taking the lag period and raising it to the uh, set of, that's a second degree polynomial. Okay. Yeah. Make sense? Sounds good. All right, so let's do that. We're just going to pull out those, those suckers. Awesome. This it really is. Ooh, uh, it's 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 really cool. I mean, here we can we don't have to explain away the wackiness of the shape uh, because we think we had a polynomial and we're telling Stata to give us a polynomial. Remember, if we if we if we had tried this on the other one, we wouldn't get this picture. So we still have to fit the data. We're still fitting trying to find the polynomial that best fits the data if, and in fact it's an exercise in the problem set. Uh, if you're given something that doesn't look like this, you're not going to get this. It's, it's going to try to find the polynomial that best fits it, um, but it might be, so on the last problem set you got something that looked like that, and it's going to find the polynomial that best fits that. What's that polynomial going to look like? Exactly, it's going to be upside down. It's going to do that. So you still have to have some, the data still has to fit what you're trying to do. Remember, you're trying to do this for a reason, because we think that the, the effects of advertising have, are going to look like this. So, and what does this say? This says that advertising, the effects of advertising has initial big effect, dies out, and then eight months later, or eight periods later, all of a sudden people start going nuts and remembering the, the and, and the, the effect starts accumul accumulating again. Um, it doesn't make any sense, but you told it to, you said, give me the polynomial that best fits that data, and that's the polynomial that best fits that data. It doesn't make any sense, because you're the one that told them to do that. You shouldn't have told them, asked it to give you that in the first place. Um, but here we can say something. Here we can say that, right, advertising is lasting about eight, eight, eight uh, periods, whatever this is, weeks, months, days. Uh, hours, if you're looking at uh, internet ads or, or radio, <clears throat> um, you know, it peaks at around, you know, whatever, four, the fourth period. Uh, so we give a, a, a duration of how long advertising lasts, when is its uh, biggest effect, and when, when it starts to die out. This is pretty cool. To get there, we got to go through all that. Construct the variables and you know, pulling out those uh, pulling out those coefficients, multiplying them times uh, the lag length raised to the first and second power. Remember, these are basically this functional form. It's the constant x and then x squared. Constant x and x squared. Except the x, the coefficient, is just the lag coefficient. So 8, 8, 4, 4, and so on. Don't ask me how, uh, don't ask me how she came up with this, because this is, this is really hard. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, I, I don't know how she, she actually did this, but it's, Yeah, I guess she wasn't playing Xbox, so she had free time. Uh, 
so much savings. <laughs> she, she was able to come up with this. Though. I think it's pretty amazing. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's really cool. All right, let's play around with this a little bit. So we're pretty much experts on this now. Uh, <laughs> what? Ish. Experts. Yeah, class or two. <laughs> but let's um, just see what happens when we change the, the number of lags, for example. So let's do this. So that's the unrestricted, and then that, so the unrestricted is, again, subject to um, that whole multicollinearity nonsense stuff. Um, we've imposed uh, a specific shape on it, structure on it, and that's what we're getting. So. Do you have one where the structure is wrong? <coughs> yeah, in the problem set, I'm gonna have you do it. Oh, I'm in now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what we can do is, what we're going to do is, we're going to stick with the polynomial because we're, we're never going to look at a cubic or a, a quadratic, or, uh, not quadratic, but a, a fourth degree polynomial. So we're always going to stick with um, um, a quadratic, a second degree polynomial because that's, this makes sense to have some cumulative effect of advertising that eventually dies out. That, I can, I can, I can buy that story. What we can change, however, is the lag length. So we're not going to change the degree of polynomial, we'll change the lag length. And see how that affects things. So let's go to six lags instead of, um, instead of eight, eight lags. And again, first thing we do is generate z. And now we're just going six lags. So essentially, all that stuff we did up there, we're just chopping off those final two lags. But the, the, the construction of Z itself is identical, except we're missing two lags. Can we call them these? Maybe. Do I have to drop my Z's? Can I use these? Drop them. Oh, I call them. Okay, I put a B on it. All right, and my, uh, run my regression. Again, we'll probably get pretty decent results. Uh, eh, our coefficients are not that significant anymore. Getting the right sign, but the significance is, is iffy. But remember, we, we intentionally kind of misspecified the model. Then we're going to pull those lags out pull those coefficients out, following that structure. And essentially what we have here is a polynomial. It's still a, a secondary polynomial. It's still going to be a, a parabola. But now it's not reaching its peak until um, 8. So if I extended this out, it would, it would come back down over there. Um, but again, we know the data really doesn't look like that. So this is the wrong shape. This is exactly what you're talking about. We're asking for the wrong shape, so I think I have them together. Yeah. So that's with the eight period lag. Uh, and with the six period lag, it's causing that um, parabola to go on to have a a wider peak. Some of the implications of kind of getting the, the lag length wrong. Um, and you should, and remember, we don't have any <coughs> guide on how many lags we should be using. So we use the information criteria, we kind of look at pictures, we kind of see which one, which models make the most sense. Uh, but in the end, Unlike this class, there's no right answer. There's, it's going to be it's going to be close, which is why you got to be able to just play with this stuff. Uh, here, I put 12 lags instead of uh, six. 
Again, even with 12 lags, we still only have three coefficients to estimate. Again, yeah, the results aren't that bad. They're, they're, they're mostly significant. And what is this going to look like? And again, what I should have done is put a red line at zero because it goes negative after about 10, um, 10 lags. So now this is saying after 10 lags, the effect of advertising is to reduce sales, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, you get wackiness, and it's double the lag. That's just the positive values. So the unrestricted lag, the eight period lag, which we ended up using, uh, the six period lag, which peaks, you know, doesn't start going down, peaks at 8, and probably doesn't start going down until after that, or doesn't start going down until after that. And the 12 period lag, which um, okay, it, it extends, it does extend the life of the, uh, the advertising effect, right? So with the, six, with the uh, 8 period lag, we know it's going to die at about 8 periods. Um, with the 6 period lag, it's not going to die out for 16, uh, yeah, 16 periods. And then with the 12 period lag, it, it looks like it's going to last a little bit. So we zero. So it'll probably go till, it went, it went till about 10 or so, 10 periods. Uh, and again, we have different implications because if, if, you're, if the true effect of advertising dies off after eight periods and we go with that six period lag, then the firm's going to think that advertising is going to last for 16 periods when in fact it dies off after eight. So that's, there are probably some fairly significant ramifications of, of that mistake. Uh, the mistake with the 12 period lag probably isn't as bad because <coughs> it's still dying off at eight periods. When we think it dies off, it's gonna die off around 10 periods. But still, you're assuming that advertising is gonna have a longer effect than it actually does. Geometric decay and the polynomial lag in the same day. But essentially, we're going to work through this. Uh, you're, going to give, you're, you're given actually two data sets um, one where the polynomial, where the quadratic bubble is, is, is appropriate, and one where it's um, perhaps not as appropriate. Time, just run through yeah. that process again, like how the math? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just briefly. So we got a, we're going to do a second order polynomial. R is 2. Uh, we're going to go 8 lags. Oops. We can go eight periods of the lag. <clears throat> so in essence, our coefficients are going to have this form. Remember, the gammas are going to come from our z's, right? So eventually, we're going to we're going to need those gammas, and we're going to plug it in here. So for each i, which is our which is our lag period, we're just going to literally. Right, so let's say it's in beta i plus. equals 
gamma 0 plus gamma 1 and pi plus gamma 2 i squared. i is the lag length, right? So we've got, we've got uh, eight lags. So for the zero lag, for the zero lag, this is just going to be gamma zero because this is going to be zero here and zero there. For the one lag, it's going to be gamma zero plus gamma one i, which is one, the period of the lag, plus gamma two i, the period of the lag, squared. So that's literally what we're doing now. So boom, uh, that's going to boil down to zero. And then for the one period lag, we've got one squared, uh, one to the one, one to the two. For the second period lag, again, it's the period of the lag that's being raised. Uh, two to the one, two to the two. And we do that for three, four, five, and so on. And we're going to need those. We're going to need these suckers. <clears throat> Uh, the next step is how we end up with how we get how we derive the z's. Uh, but we derive I forgot <clears throat> we derive the z's by taking these. I mean, these are just going to be show, show uh, here again, and plug them into our original unrestricted uh, distributed lag model. And that's going to be a mess. <laughs> and this is going to show up on the next slide also. So here's where we construct Z. Z comes from here, which is basically <clears throat> here it is. If you look at this, it's gonna be your ZT0, ZT1, and that's it. But again, you can see the one, two, and then two squared. And then 3, 3 squared, 4, 4 squared. So you see this kind of pattern. And these are the ones we actually construct. And we estimate. And this gives us the gammas. And the gammas are, are what we started in that first slide with the betas. So we want to recover those betas, which were here. Pull this. Add these, multiply them times 2 and 4, 3 and 9, and so on and so on. So literally, I think what you're doing is good because you're, you're writing it out, and you're, it, it, it really is the template for your do fall. You're pulling out these. these gamuts. And again, you can see the pattern of the lag length and then the lag length squared, that polynomial pattern. And again, lots of copying and pasting. So, yeah, so having the, these, these slides should help. All that so we can impose the structure on the lag coefficient so we don't get stuff bouncing around all over the place, the coefficients bouncing around all over the place. This is, there is no, yeah, this is all uh, graduate level stuff, which is what we're in, in graduate level class, so this is, this, this stuff is really taught at uh, in very many of you. Uh, I've seen it taught maybe at two places. And they're both Ivy League places. This is cool stuff. It's pretty out there. All of that because we want a pretty picture. <laughs> but that's what it boils down to. It boils down to being able to visualize the effects of advertising. Um, imagine all that 
and then you show up. This is your PowerPoint slide. All, you know, ultimately, the question was, what's the effect of advertising? Well, there's a delayed effect, gradual effect, builds, and then it dies out. Advertising lasts for eight, eight periods. It peaks at four. Uh, that's a great visual. Try explaining those regression coefficients and all that other stuff to, uh, to marketing people, and it's, it's just not going to go. It's not going to work. Um, so the, the whole point of this is to create visuals. It's all about visualizing our results. And again, this is pretty cool stuff. Or not. I find it cool. I get excited about this stuff. <coughs> I don't get out my chill. This is more algebraic. Than it is. It's more sense to me. It's, it's just, uh, it really is pretty simple math. You're, you got these, these, it's a polynomial. We're squaring stuff. Combine, we're combining it with econometrics and stata, and we're pulling the regression coefficients and multiplying them and then squaring and stuff. Uh, but it, it, it does boil down to pretty simple algebra, pretty simple math. Not even algebra, just math. We're not solving for anything, we're just generating these results. And like I said, I think it's, I have no idea how, how, how Almond came up with this stuff, but it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, her, her original paper was uh, capital uh, assets, so basically building, accumulating uh, capital and, and how that affects long-term growth. So um, people in the marketing profession pretty much stole it from her and, Applied it to well, you kind of have the same thing with advertising. You build up some capital stock. You know, you, you see commercials over and over and over. How does that affect our purchasing behavior? Well, sometimes it'll have this effect. This kind of gradual buildup. Fairly small. The first commercial doesn't have much of an impact, but eventually you see it you know, over time, and we build up that. It's that investment. It's an asset. short day, but like I said, four, I think it's only four, four slides or so. Uh, yeah, I think it's four slides, but there's a lot crammed into that. So, we good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> see how the homework goes. Yeah, we'll see how the homework goes. Uh, like I said, when you look at that new file, it, it, it should look a lot like, assuming you did the homework, right? <laughs> uh, it should look a lot like the last assumption. One. We're pulling, yeah, you're pulling stuff like out. Uh, you're not going to. We're not doing any. Uh, I don't think we're doing any uh, information criteria. Uh, no, you can't get them all right. No. no. Yeah, and, and again, I, uh, this is a kind of a judgment call, but I think doing one of these. At a time is better than doing geometric decay in, in one day. I mean, we are going to let this class out early, but your brain's probably overloaded. And yeah. I don't think we want to do that. That's all I got. Yeah. All right. Uh,